Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you why Notion is a better note-taking tool for most people and how it compares to OneNote. OneNote is a free note-taking app that comes with Windows 10. It's also part of Microsoft 365, so it integrates with Teams and SharePoint. Like OneNote, Notion is an app-taking tool, but it's a note-taking tool on steroids. Over the last few years, it's become the cool kid on the block, with internet productivity gurus like Ali Abdal promoting it as the next best thing since sliced bread, or as some are calling it, a second brain. But Notion is quite different from OneNote and it lets you do loads of stuff without ever having to leave the application. So I decided to take it for a spin and today I'm going to share with you what I discovered. Probably like me, it's a good idea to have a place where you can jot down ideas, brainstorm or take notes during a meeting or presentation. But whatever walk of life you're in or whatever you do, having a place where you can store and organise that information is going to be something that comes in handy. I've been using OneNote for years and to be honest I've never really found it to be very effective. It's just something that I use because it's there, automatically installed and part of my Microsoft. Microsoft 365 subscription. What I need from a note taken app is something that I can well of course take notes with, jot them down and store them. Now I mainly do that using the keyboard and mouse or sometimes from my smartphone and I need to be able to store them in a structured way, link ideas together and to find those notes quickly when I need them again in the future. But it's not the greatest solution for organising or structuring notes and to be really productive and effective, you need a way to store and organise your notes that's not just a chaotic mess of tidbits that you jotted down at some point which are then hard to work with later. It makes a difference in getting real value out of presentations, courses, meetings and other projects that you're working on and being able to assemble that information later in a useful way. So let's have a look at how OneNote works and why it probably isn't the best note taking solution for you. OneNote works and looks like a traditional block note or notebook. And Microsoft is good at making simple, intuitive user interfaces. Okay, well, not all of the time, but quite a lot of the time. And OneNote is really simple to understand and easy to pick up. And you can see that the notebook itself, the user interface, is organised into notebooks, sections and pages. You can put a lot of different kinds of elements on OneNote pages, including text of course, images, PDF documents, URLs, YouTube videos, maths equations, printouts and the list goes on. You can also tag information and search for it so that it's easier to find in the future. So you can see in the OneNote user interface here that everything's organised into sections and pages. Now I'll just show you where I have this Windows Business Weekly notebook open. So if I click on the drop down list here, I have a whole load of notebooks open here which I can switch to or I can load more notebooks. This is the Windows 10 app that comes pre-installed with Windows 10 and with this particular version of OneNote I can only store my notebooks in the cloud. If you're using the full desktop version of OneNote that comes with the Microsoft 365 apps then you can also store your notebooks locally on your PC. But here you can see there are some other notebooks that I could open or I can search for them or I can add another Microsoft account and search for notebooks there. So these are the notebooks that I have currently loaded into OneNote and I can choose from any of them. I've got the Windows Business Weekly notebook here open and you can see these are the sections of the notebook so I can switch between them and these are the pages inside each section. So if I just minimise this part a little bit, now you can see this page. Now this is a typical OneNote page. So you can see here that I've got various bits of information about my camera setup, how I'm editing the video and all sorts of information there. But as you can see, let me just scroll across to the right a little bit. You can see it's all just kind of unstructured and dumped onto the page and 
not very organized, so it's quite hard to see what's going on, where the relevant pieces of information are, and how I might find them if I need to look at them at some point in the future, of course. So, you know, while it kind of works, it's definitely not the most effective or productive way to refer to these notes in the future. So I'm going to create a new page here quickly, so let's just call it test page. And if you come along to the top here, on the home tab, of course, we've got all the kind of standard text tools like bold and bullet lists and numbered lists and all the kind of formatting stuff that you would expect. If we come over to insert, there are all sorts of different elements that you can add to a page here. So I might want to add a table, for instance, a file, a printout, pictures. I can even add things like equations and stickers and connect it to Outlook. You can also add audio recordings, which are then searchable, which is great. So there are lots of really good features here that uh, are definitely worth considering depending on what kind of note taker that you are. If you come over to the Draw tab, now this is where it really starts to get useful for people who are using tablets and pens, of course. And you can see here all sorts of things like highlighters and markers, which, you know, while you can use them on a desktop device it doesn't really make much sense in most cases of course this is stuff that you're going to use with a tablet although we do have some traditional kind of add shapes so we can add you know a shape here and of course I can just do that with the mouse it's no problem but in general most of these tools are going to be things that you'd want to do with a pen doesn't even seem to work with the with the mouse I've never tried it before but as you can see here, this is really about just drawing onto that completely blank canvas in a very unstructured way. So in a nutshell, that's how OneNote works. Of course, I'm skipping over some of the more advanced features, but it gives you an idea about how the application works and how you might use it. OneNote does provide some structure for you in the notebooks, sections and pages. But on the pages themselves, it's really up to you to provide some kind of structure. But it's literally too flexible and it's just a space, almost like a scrapbook, where you can just dump information and it's up to you to structure and order it in a way that's meaningful and makes sense. But of course that requires effort, time and extra work on your part. OneNote really seems to lend itself to users that have have a tablet and a pen. I've been sitting in front of it many times thinking that I just really want to grab hold of my computer monitor and start drawing because the whole interface seems to be designed around that, that it's much like having a notebook and a pen in your hand. But of course, if you're using a keyboard, a mouse or a smartphone, you've got a little bit of a different experience. So if you've got the right device and equipment to literally jot down ideas, to brainstorm, maybe to write out mathematical equations, or just generally doodle your way through life, then OneNote, I think, is probably an ideal solution. But I'm not that person, and I guess that most people watching this video spend most of their time sitting in front of a keyboard or mouse if they really want to be productive and get actual work done. One of the other problems that I have with OneNote is that the notebooks themselves are actually just files, either locally on your hard drive or in the cloud, depending on which version of the app you're losing. And the problem with this is that the notebooks can become detached from the actual application itself and get lost. So sometimes I've made notes in the past, but the first task is that I've actually got to find the notebook, where is it located, to actually search and look through that information. So OneNote is a great solution for people with tablets and pens if you need handwriting recognition and you want to solve mathematical equations and do things like that. But if you're a more traditional note taker, then I think that Notion is going to be a better solution for you. Notion solves most of the issues that I have with OneNote. When you first open Notion, the UI can be a little overwhelming because it isn't as intuitive or uncluttered as OneNote. But it doesn't take long to get used to it, and it reminds me a little bit of Slack. So you have some command line stuff if you want to do that, but in my opinion, the UI is better laid out and easier on the eye. The first thing that I really like is the toggle list feature. Now it's a bit like a standard bullet point list that you might use in OneNote or Word for instance, but on steroids. So what it allows you to do is expand and collapse each section of your list. 
And that's really good if you want to test yourself, for instance, for an exam, so you can have a question and then reveal the answer below, for instance. Or it can help you just to structure your notes so that you can expand and collapse information and only see what's necessary at any one time. Everything is organized into workspaces and you can create a new workspace from one of the templates that's built in. That's what I did to create my new workspace initially. And in each workspace, you can have everything from a simple wiki to a table, to a database, to a list of documents, for instance. And there's loads of different stuff that you can have in your workspace. And the great thing about about databases in Notion is that they're really simple to set up. So it's just basically a list of columns and then all the linking kind of automatically works in the background. So you don't really have to do anything. So it may sound a little bit scary embedding a database, but it's really simple and I'll show you how it works now. So here I am now in Notion and you can see it looks very different from OneNote. Now I set this workspace up using the engineering template. I couldn't find a template that really fitted exactly what I wanted, but this is the closest that I could find. And of course you can modify them. It's just to use as a starting point. Now you can see here that we have various sections in the workspace. Now the content calendar I added, but all of the others were there already. Skillshare notes I adapted from course notes, so I just changed the title and a little bit about the columns. I'll show you that in a second. Also, we have here a to-do list, a roadmap, which I have not used, uh, a list of documents and meeting notes. So let's start by having a look at the notes here for Skillshare. Now I'm doing a few courses at the moment on Skillshare, so I decided to use Notion as my go-to solution for note-taking for those courses. And basically you can see here that we have a table and we have a column here that I can check off. So whether I've reviewed these notes or not, the name of the course, I added the teacher column because I thought it was quite useful to see which is the teacher. The type of course, now what this means is what I'm going to use this information that I've learned for. So you can see there that everything I'm doing basically for YouTube, a link to the course in the materials column, and if I scroll across you can see when I created the entry. Now what's great about this is that as I add a new course, I also get the option to link directly to the page for that particular course. So for instance, I've been doing this editing course by Ali Abdal, it's a really great course by the way, I'd recommend it. So if I open the page connected to that course, you can see all of my notes. So we get that automatic link into that information. So everything's kind of interconnected, if you like. And here I'm using the famous toggle feature of Notion. So basically it's very similar to a bullet list. I can expand it and collapse it. If it's gray, that means there's nothing below it. So I can add something below it if I want. Maybe I'll expand this and you can see there's more information there that I noted. But the great thing about these pages is that everything works on a block system. So if I come down to the end here and let's just break out of this. So now it's either basically saying here I can just type some text. So let's type something here. And then I press enter and then I go on to a new block. Now, for instance, if I want to add a toggle list, I just press the slash here, and then I get a list of commands. So I can either format whatever I'm going to enter if it's just text, or if I want to enter a toggle list, I can select that from the option here, and now I can start a new toggle list. So it works like this. So I could maybe call this heading one, if I press enter and then tab, much like you do tabbed bullet points in Word or PowerPoint, for instance, then I get to create this kind of collapsible list here. So I could call that subheading one, to learn to spell and subheading two. And basically that's how it works. And then I could create a further sub list in that list if I wanted to. And you can create those kind of hierarchical structures within this toggle list, which makes it really convenient, not only for organizing your notes, but just making them easier to read and more structured. And you can get rid of information maybe that's not relevant at the moment. So it makes things much clearer to understand if you want to focus on a particular topic. And you can move these blocks around. So I could move this down here, for instance, 
elements. You can also select everything and of course you get the option to format it much like you do in Word for instance. And if I wanted to turn it basically into something else, I could also select the option here, turn into a heading or just standard text if I didn't want this to be a toggle list. So this reminds me quite a lot of Slack and how Slack works where you have the commands, you also have that in Teams as well. So it's kind of, you know, something that's a little bit more advanced. So it's maybe not quite as intuitive as OneNote, but there's not much of a learning curve involved. I mean, I picked it up pretty quickly and I think, you know, users who are not used to this kind of environment probably would need a little bit of training, however, to get to grips with it maybe. So what else can I show you here? So let's just come out of that page. And you can see here, we've got things like color coding, and you can also use tables and databases here to do things like work tracking management, like you might do in Microsoft Lists. I also have a video about Microsoft Lists if you're interested in that, and I put a link up here in the video description. Let's come back here and we've got the to-do list. So I've got various things there that I might want to do in the coming months and weeks. A list of documents here, which I haven't really used yet, but again, you can format this how you like and create these tables to look and feel however you want them to. And you've got various things here like adding templates. So this was the class notes that I got by default in the engineering workspace. And I changed this a little bit to suit my own purposes. But that's what it looked like originally. If I come here to content calendar, I've added a few things here that I'm doing this week and next. And also much like in Teams or Outlook, you can change the view. So I can change this maybe to a table view. And you can see there that I have all of the things that I'm supposed to be doing this week just as a list. But it's quite useful to be able to do that and switch between different views. Now I just have two views there, but you can add different views and customize them, of course. And if we come back to templates, then you can see there's a whole load of stuff here that we could have a look at. I haven't used a lot of these things yet because I'm still experimenting with it and going through it. But there's a whole load of stuff here that helps you track, you know, different activities and projects. And of course, you can use them as a basis for your own pages. If we come up to members and settings, there are also various connections and integrations that you can add here. As I said earlier, it's a really big downside for many people, I guess, that there's no integration with Microsoft 365 and Teams, but there are various integrations here. I'm not sure, maybe there are other things that can also be integrated that are not listed here. That's something that I need to look into. Because everything is ordered using blocks and tables, you don't get that unstructured mess that quickly develops when you're using OneNote. You can put Kanban boards, to-do lists, calendars, wikis, database, tables into your workspaces, and it's a very, very flexible solution. In the time that I've been using Notion, it's really changed the way that I take notes, and more importantly, the value that I get out of them afterwards. It's just so much better suited to organizing and structuring your notes if you're using a keyboard and mouse. I love the block-based layout, the databases, the toggle lists, and the general feel and look of the application. It's just great fun to use. Of course, one major downside of Notion is that there's no integration with Microsoft 365. So for people who are fully invested into that ecosystem, that may be a major drawback. But for my part, I'm gonna use Notion and Microsoft 365 side by side. And another great thing is that Notion is free, so it makes it accessible to everyone. Although there are subscription plans for people and teams that want access to more features or more storage. So please give Notion a try. I think you're really gonna love it. I've been hearing about it for some time now and I decided I'm just gonna give in and give it a spin. And I think that I'm definitely never going back to OneNote. Notion really does have the power to completely change the way that you study or take notes during meetings and just make you so more effective and efficient at being able to recall that information and to do something useful with it and make use of it, which of course is the whole point of taking notes in the first place. If you like this video, if you've got value out of it then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for similar videos on tech and productivity and if there's anything else that you would like to know about Notion or OneNote and the differences between them then please let me know in the comments below and here are a couple of other videos that you might also find useful so please feel free to check them out. That's it from me today and I'll see you next time.